Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our automatic weapon by adding damage to the bullets. And we're also going to keep track of our kills in a leader stats. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So just like before, I have an automatic weapon. But now whenever the bullets touch the zombies, they do damage. And then whenever the zombies die, they keep track of my kills up in the leader stats. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by adding a script in the server script service that'll keep track of our kills and the leader stats. So to do that, we're just gonna add a script to the server script service, and I went ahead and renamed it to kills. So on the script here, we're gonna create a simple leader stats, and I've done this quite a few times before, so I'm not gonna go into too much detail. We're gonna say game.players dot player added. So this is when the player joins the game. We're going to connect this with a function. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put player. Inside this function, we're going to start by saying local leader stats is going to be equal to instance.new. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put folder inside of quotation marks. Next, we're going to say leader stats dot name and that's going to be equal to leader stats inside of quotation marks. And finally, we'll say leader stats dot parent is going to be equal to the player. Okay, so now we just need to create a value for the kills. So we'll do that by saying local kills. And this is going to be equal to instance dot new. This time we're going to be creating an int value, so a number. Next, we're going to say kills dot name is going to be equal to kills inside of quotation marks. And finally, we'll say kills dot parent, and we're going to store this inside of leader stats. All right, so that's all we have to do for that. So let's go ahead and double check and make sure that's working. All right, and everything looks good. So we have a leader stats with a kills value. The next thing we're going to do is add some lines of code to our bullet create script that should be inside of server script service. Okay, so on this script, we're going to write some new code right above this line right here. And what we're going to be writing is the damage script, so that whenever a bullet touches another object that has a humanoid, it's going to damage that humanoid. To do that, we can say bullet dot touched colon connect. We're going to connect this with a function. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put other part, so this will be the other part the bullet touches. Inside this function, we'll start by saying local humanoid is going to be equal to other part dot parent. And then we're going to say colon find first child. So this is the part where we're looking for the humanoid inside the object. So we'll put humanoid inside of quotation marks. If we're able to find the humanoid, then what we want to do is say humanoid colon and take damage. Inside the parentheses here will be the amount of damage that you want to do. So in my case, I'm just going to choose 25. Okay, so this is the basic idea of the script. So whenever this bullet touches another object that has a humanoid, we're going to do damage to that. But there's still a couple things we need to add to this. So we want to check for a humanoid, but we want to make sure that we're not damaging ourselves. So to do that, we could say and humanoid dot parent dot name. And we want to make sure that's not equal to the player's name. So we'll say player dot name. And we're getting this player right up here when it passes from the local side. So we're checking to make sure that whichever humanoid we found is not the player's humanoid. If it's some other humanoid, then we can go ahead and damage it. Okay, and another thing we want to add is whenever a bullet hits another object, we want to destroy it so we can get rid of it. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to include a small wait time. And then after that, we're going to say bullet, colon, and destroy. So on our script here, we have two different ways the bullets are going to get destroyed. So they can either touch another object, which is what's happening right here, or they can get removed after two seconds with this line right here. All right, so that'll cover the damage part, but we also want to know if we killed the other humanoid. And we can do that with an if statement. We're going to say if humanoid dot health is greater than zero. So we want to make sure that the humanoid starts alive. And then what we're going to be checking for is humanoid dot health and then minus 25. So this is the damage value that I'm doing. So these two should match. And if you want to, you can create a separate variable for this, which I'll do in a second. So if humanoid health minus the damage value, 
is less than or equal to zero. So this would mean that we killed the humanoid. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add one to our kills value. So we're going to take the player that shot the bullet. We're going to take a look at their leader stats. We're going to take a look at their kills. And we're going to change the value of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to add one to it, which we can do by saying plus equals and one. All right, so before we test it, let's go ahead and change this number right here into a variable so that we can change it a little bit easier later on. So what I'm going to do up top here is create a variable. So we'll say local. And we can just say something like damage amount. And we're going to set that equal to 25. And then I'm just going to replace 25 with the variable name. So inside of the parentheses here, I'm going to put damage amount. And then for this part right here, I'm also going to do damage amount. This makes it a little bit easier if you want to change this value. You can just change it once up here rather than having to change it twice down there. All right, so that should do it, though. So we added a touch event to the bullet. It's checking to see if the object has a humanoid, and it's making sure that it's not ourselves that we're damaging. And I just noticed that I want to move this below the if statement. So I want to put this down here. And the reason I want to make that change is I want to check to see if I will kill the player when the bullet hits them, and then take the damage. Otherwise, if I take the damage first and then check to see if they're alive, they may be dead, but it won't count the kill. All right, so like I was saying, we're first checking to see if the humanoid has health. And then this part right here is checking to see if my shot will kill the humanoid. And if it does kill the humanoid, then we're going to add one to the kills value. Okay, and this part right here is just taking the damage. So whatever value we put for this is the amount of damage the humanoid is going to take. Okay, and after it hits any object, it's going to destroy the bullet. All right, let's go and check it out and make sure everything works. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out. So whenever the bullets hit the zombie, it should do damage. Okay, that looks good. So it damages the zombie. And then whenever I kill a zombie, it increases my kills count. All right, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.